Nothing gives you a more powerful feeling than blazing through snowy landscapes on your newly purchased snowmobile. But not all sleds are made equal, and snowmobile designers are not immune to making a mistake. Welcome back to Glame Top 5, and today, we'll be looking at the top 6 absolute worst snowmobiles you can buy. Though none of these would be the absolute worst of the worst, if you're a new buyer looking to get into the snow sled scene, you'd be better off avoiding them. Be sure to like and subscribe, or you will continue to know nothing, Jon Snow. So let's get started. And spoiler alert, you're not ready for number one on this list. Number six, 2005 Summit Highmark 1000. If you were a part of the snow sledding scene in the early 2000s, chances are that you might have heard of the Highmark 800. With its rider forward design and the much higher powered motor, it was as if Skidoo had just waltzed into the snow sled world and changed it forever. With such a massive hit, it was only natural that people would expect Skidoo to continue to break the records once again, wouldn't it? Or well, that's what we thought. When the Highmark 1000 first released, everyone practically drooled over the prospect of the new and improved yellow-blooded monster. With its brand new Rev RT chassis and a higher power motor, surely the 1000 would allow Skidoo to keep its snowy crown. But when the 1000 finally came out, it didn't turn out quite so well, at least according to everyone that owned one of these sleds. In real-world testing, the 800 proved to be more swift, nimble, and more reliable than its newer and supposedly better sibling. Cooped with endless electronic issues, the bigger brother was quickly forgotten, and the 800 continued to reign supreme. Number 5. Polaris 900 Fusion Coming in at number 5, we have the Polaris Fusion 900. The poor Fusion has to be the least deserving of the entries in this list. While spec-wise the Fusion was impressive, to say the least considering its two-stroke 866cc engine and a comparatively lower weight, the Fusion was a very fast and overall impressive sled. But if you had it for a year or more, you'd know exactly why it's on the list. With fragile 05 pistons that broke more often than they should have, and knocking holes that blew nearly every ride, and an IQ chassis that dented faster than a new EV, the Fusion was a disaster to maintain. Though the 900s are still being sold to this day, if you look carefully, you'd notice that the sleds have been modded. That is because the 900 wasn't that bad if you managed to change the things that break down so often. But, well, if you were going for stock, you'd find yourself dealing with the repairs more than actually riding it. And, considering that most of the mods for the 900 were parts taken from the Fusion 600, you would be better off getting a well-maintained 600 right from the get-go. Another case of the older sibling being better than the younger, flashier one. Number 4. 1997 Arctic Cat Powder Extreme Arctic Cat was on everyone's mouth in the early 90s. And if you were a snow motorhead in the 90s, you must have had your eyes on the Arctic Cat ZRT600. With huge power and a bulletproof motor at its heart, the ZRT600 wasn't for the faint of heart. Seeing the popularity of the ZRT600 and how people were modding it and converting it into a trail sled, Arctic Cat saw the perfect opportunity to build their own trail sled. And it was so easy for them too. All they had to do was take a ZRT600, make its track longer and a bit more deeper for the mountain trails, and add altitude compensation to counter the height. That's all there was to do, but Arctic decided to take it a step further, and added some trail-specific gimmicks like mountain grab bars and whatnot. These were all of the ingredients chosen to create the perfect little mountain sled, but Arctic Cat added an extra ingredient to the list, more weight. You'd think the mountain variant of a sled would be lighter, right? I mean, any sensible manufacturer would make it so. But the Arctic Cat decided to pull what we call a 1000 IQ move. Instead of making the mountain variant the one that's supposed to be lighter, light, they made it even heavier. This gave it a very sluggish feel, and combined that with some questionable build choices, the Powder Extreme was an extreme disaster. Number 3. 1989 Wildcat 650 we have another entry from Arctic Cat coming in at number 3. The Wildcat series of snowmobiles were made more for speed than for comfort. Featuring over 100 horsepower and surprisingly low weight, the Wildcat was promoted by Arctic as possibly the fastest snowmobile on Earth. It was Arctic's answer to your need for speed. It was a sled built for racers, daredevils, and the like. But if it was so great, what went wrong? 
After the hundred pre-production models were made and shipped off to reviewers, racers, and dealers, the consumer variants of the Wildcat started to release. They had numerous and noticeable changes, including a different bulkhead, hood, dash, and seat, plus 38mm carbs in place of the 40mm ones found on pre-production units. These carbs were the main culprit for the Wildcat's demise, producing nothing but problem after problem, throttle issues, faulty tethers, that broke every time the sled hit a jump, and all the other issues combined ensured that this sled was not the nimble and speedy snow monster that everyone hoped for. Number 2. 1994 Yamaha VMAX 4750 ST Alright guys, hear me out before you cancel me. I agree, the VMAX 4 is cool, or should I say groovy, considering the 90s release date. I digress. How could anything produced by the famous engineers at Yamaha not be amazing? I mean, come on! A four-cylinder, two-stroke engine that screams at 9,000 RPM. It's sure to be the one, right? The one sled to rule them all. But that wasn't exactly the case. Though the VMAX 4 performed wonderfully on basic usage, the VMAX 4 was built as a mountain sled. Due to its underperforming engine and trials, high fuel consumption, and the hefty competition it faced from its competitors, the VMAX 4 was unfortunately forgotten and lost as a deep snow machine. Number 1. 2005 Polaris RMK900 And last but definitely the least, we have the RMK900 from Polaris. With Skidoo's revolutionary rider-forward design, the snowmobile world was undergoing a huge shift in design. Not wanting to play second fiddle to Skidoo, Polaris released the RMK900, officially Polaris' first foray into the new rider-forward chassis. And looking back, the chassis was quite solid and capable. Coupled with the monster-sized 900cc engine, expectations were quite high for the RMK900. So what went wrong? What was the issue with the RMK900? Well, the better question would be, what wasn't the issue? Clutch issues, piston failures, crankshafts blowing up, and even electrical issues, the Polaris was plagued with small but numerous problems. All of the recalls and the updates didn't help either as the RMK900's reputation was already too tarnished for anyone to buy it. Despite Polaris finally fixing the RMK900 and making it a very capable sled even to this day, unfortunately, the rocky start spelt the end for the poor girl. Though there's no doubt that there will be riders that will defend any one of these to the very end, these were just some of the sleds that we thought fit the list. Let us know in the comments below which of these snowmobiles you think doesn't belong on the list. Don't forget to like the video and share it too! For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button! And don't forget to press the bell icon as well! As always, you've been fantastic! Bye!